If there are certain ranges that you use a lot that consist out of more than one condition, then there's an option to store this group of conditions as a single condition. This is done in the multi-condition menu. For example, let's say we have this tree and we want to store this group of conditions as a single condition. To do so, right-click the Edit Conditions field and select Store. Give a name to your condition and press OK. And your multi-condition has just been added at the bottom of this list. OK, I'll now leave the menu. And now, if you want to use your multi-condition at a later point in time, or at another location, I'll use this action here to demonstrate. Then just right-click the Edit Conditions field, and double-click on the multi-condition that you want to load. And there it is. And we can tell that this is a multi-condition by the blue symbol in front of it. And if I mouse over it, a pop-up will show the list of conditions it contains. To expand this multi-condition, back into the conditions it exists out of, just double-click it. And it will be replaced by its conditions. Let's now have another look at the menu, because there's some more options that I'd like to discuss. If you turn off the checkbox, Override Current Conditions, then if you load a multi-condition from the list, it will be added at the bottom of the Actions Conditions, instead of replacing them. If you want to change the order of the multi-conditions, then you can use these blue arrows here. And with this red cross, you can delete a multi-condition from the list. And finally, we're left with these options here, Static and Dynamic. If you use the option Static and double-click the multi-condition to load it, then the multi-condition is loaded into the tree as it is defined at this point in time, which is basically what you would expect. A dynamic multi-condition, however, is a very special option. Namely, if you ever change the definition of what is in the multi-condition, even if you do this in another tree or at another location, then this new definition will be applied everywhere, in every location of every single file wherever you've ever used it. So for example, let's say that I'll make this condition a dynamic multi-condition. So I'll select dynamic and load it. And a dynamic multi-condition is indicated with this red symbol. And once again, this is the range that's currently in it. Let's now take this range here. Save it as a multi-condition. But I'll save over our old multi-condition by giving it the same name. Yes, I want to override. And now the definition for this multi-condition has changed. And as a result, this new definition will automatically be applied to the dynamic multi-condition here. I'll just close this menu and expand the multi-condition to see what's in it. And indeed, its contents have changed to the new definition. The reason why it works like this is because the properties of the multi-conditions are saved in a file. By overwriting the previous contents of the file, you have changed the meaning of this dynamic multi-condition wherever it is used. Using a multi-condition can be very handy if you, for example, define a multi-condition to be a standard seabetting range, but at some later point decide to make some changes to the seabetting range. By doing so, all the multi-conditions for seabetting that you have ever used in all files where you have ever used them will now adapt to the new definition, just by you having changed the definition in one location.
Another use for a dynamic multi-condition would be in this file. Here we want all players to have the same range, which we have expressed as a dynamic multi-condition. If you now want to change this range for all players at once, by editing the range in just one single location, then all we'll need to do is override the old definition of the multi-condition with a new one. And as a result, the ranges for all players will automatically adjust to the new definition.